All right, first video review with a new laptop, so I gotta make this something good. Could review Windsor Newton, but I already reviewed this one. Well, guess I'll have to do something a little different. This one will do. Go ahead and roll that. Awesome intro. If you guys are new here, I just want to say thank you for checking out the channel and give a quick little introduction. I'm J Rod of Balbrawl Productions. I draw power and my own soul. We do awesome ink reviews, art challenges, animation, everything in between, everything comic, horror, and science fiction related. We tend to do it here. And today we're doing a little bit of a throwback, as the first ever ink that I reviewed was of the Windsor and Newton drawing ink. It's one of my favorite inks of all time, and Windsor and Newton, they are one of my favorite ink companies of all time. So when I found out they had a calligraphy line, I had to give it a shot. Now comparing the two ink bottles, I have to say that I honestly do prefer the drawing design more. Yes, it is less ink, but it's also at a cheaper price range, selling from $5.99 to $4.99, while this one tends to sell for $7.99 to $9.99, depending on where you go, for 30 milliliters of Now, I will say that this is more of a generic design, and this one stands out. I'm really curious to see what the differences between the two are, as the Windsor Newton drawing ink is really good for drawing. It works great with dip pens and brushes. It works great with quill nibs. What is the difference between this one here? As it specifically states it does work with fountain pens and dip pens, I want to know how it will work with a brush. Is it waterproof, for example? as it doesn't mention it anywhere on the packaging. And I have to also say something real quick. I accidentally picked up the blue black version of this ink instead of the all black version. That was a mistake on my part, but I decided to lean into it with today's illustration. Now to really get an idea for this ink right here, let's go ahead and break out our Batman sketchbook. Very nice little hints of blue, but for the most part, we're getting that solid black, which I really do like. And of course, the thinner the lines, the more intense that black's gonna be, and the thicker it is, the more blue is gonna show through. I am noticing a little bit of the white of the paper showing, so we may have to hit some of these areas twice. I think that's part of the paper itself, because this paper wasn't designed for ink, but you know what? It's the Batman sketchbook, we gotta use it. I just wanna go a little bit on a tangent here, but for me personally, I always like to check out and review a company's black ink before their colored ink. And the reason is because it's the ink you're gonna use the most traditionally, and they tend to put their best foot forward there. On top of that, with black ink, you get 100% black straight away. You just put it down on the page, boom, there's your 100%. You can dilute it to get your grays, you can crosshatch. There's a lot you can do to actually get those gray and smaller tones in. So you can actually take a black ink and get a 90, an 80, a 75, a 60, whatever you need, you can get it through a black ink. However, with colored ink, that tends to not be the case, as I find that you're really never going to get that 100%, let's say, blue. So for this ink itself, being mixed with black, so it is a little more on the black side, I would have preferred to actually test and review the black ink first, but we're gonna make do what we got in hand. Now, one thing that is interesting is that it's working good with the dip pen, and of course. Now let's test it with our quill nib, because I'm really curious about that. So let's go ahead and get a little dip, and then I dipped a little too heavy, but that's fine. Oh, maybe I didn't dip heavy enough. Let's see. There we go. Oh, that's nice. I like how that's going down. Very nice. Oh, I spilled some. That's okay. This is why we do our tests. And now we're going to go in and do our brush tests. I imagine this is where we're really going to see that blue shine. So let's see. Yeah, I... Ooh. I like that. I like that little hint of blue right there. Very nice. Now, first off. This, as I suspected, does not work as well with the brush. I can already tell. It's a little difficult to control. It's not It's not easy to spread out. We're able to get some really nice layers, though, especially with that blue. Very nice. I actually really like this. I think we could do some stuff with this. Let's do a little bit of an ink wash so we can kind of see how it feels. And I feel like that's really going to be, yep, right there. We're going to get more blue from that. So that's interesting. So we can actually go in with a heavy black right here and then work in these lighter blues by watering down our ink. So instead of those grays, working with blue. Now, one thing I'm very curious about is if this ink is waterproof. Now, obviously, we just put it down, so it's not going to have a lot of time to dry. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my rag and just kind of get the excess off. So now that I got the excess off and gave it just a quick little dry. I'm going to take my brush just with water. I'm going to run it through and you can easily tell if an ink is still wet or if it's not waterproof and I'm going to show you how. So let's go ahead and run it. You can see here this ink I don't think it's waterproof because this brush right here, we cleaned it, we dried it off, doesn't have, as you can see, a lot of like actual blue pigment on it. But when we run it through here, it's actually picking up that blue pigment. So this ink probably is not waterproof. So that's gonna make ink washes a little difficult. Of course, you can do some really cool complexity in your ink washes if it's not waterproof because you can do fun little layering things, almost like watercolor, but either way, so that is important to note. So we're gonna have to keep that in mind when we do our illustration.
illustration. Now I kept alluding to our illustration, so what is it? And well, I have something a little special planned for today. Now what makes today's illustration so special is that it's not a wrap, it's not a pull there, it's not the magician, it's not even on the conquistador. Today's illustration is of Wrath's evil sister, Lust. Now for those who don't know Wrath and of course all the other characters that I just listed were characters that I created for this channel so that we can not only have some fun doing awesome art, but I can even entertain you guys with a comic I'm putting together with them all. Wrath of course evolved out of my idea for a Venom Sona when we did the whole Spider Sona thing, and I've spun him off into his own character with his own mythology. He is the youngest among his siblings, of course based off of the Seven Deadly Sins, and is the only one to repent, wanting to become a good guy and make a difference in the world, a positive change. Lust is his evil sister, and while Wrath's color schemes are black and red, Lust has a blue and black color scheme which I think will work well with this ink. I penciled this about a month ago, so I can't wait to finally ink it. Also, I did use reference of a ballerina, which I'll put on screen, so proper credit to the photographer for the inspiration for this piece, and let's go ahead and jump in it by rolling that super time lapse. Aiken this piece was a challenge. You see, in our test, while the dip pens were very smooth, I found that in practice, it was quite the opposite. You see, I've noticed that when people actually do calligraphy art, they don't actually sketch out the letters. They may do that as a test to kind of get the idea for the shape, but really when they go in and do the actual illustration and the calligraphy art, it's done raw. There's no real sketches, maybe light boxed. And here, that is apparent with the ink, as when I went to go over my actual blue line art, I found that was very difficult to control. Keeping it straight and keeping it with the actual line Art, which is difficult and on top of that the line art itself was actually jagged which wasn't apparent in a test and I thought that was really weird and it just wasn't as smooth or professional as I would have liked I really do like my line art to be very smooth very nice very fluid and here I just wasn't getting that now in our test I did know that the ink was going to be difficult to control the brush and since most calligraphy is not done with a brush traditionally at least here in America I knew that was gonna be a problem so I decided to take my time now this ink did take a while to dry I decided to just work with it and just go slow and steady now I ended up using a 00 Windsor Newton brush just to go in and do my filling in. And while it was slow, it did get the job done and added a nice little blue tint and some subtle shading that I really liked. Then after that was done, I went in with my ink wash and I noticed there was my problem. You see, in our test, I didn't realize just how unwaterproof this ink was because oh boy, it faded easily. And I had to go in and actually touch up areas after I did it. Now I already committed to that blue wash, so I just went through and just made it lighter and just layered it here and there. One thing about less design is that she's meant to be traditionally beautiful with exaggerated features and that whole hourglass look. So drawing her is a little difficult, but honestly, I do like drawing her. And on top of that, going in and actually doing the detail work is really fun. And just like Wrath, because they are siblings, her design incorporates no cross hatching as it's meant to be like this liquid armor. And since she has blue highlights instead of red, that's where I really found this ink to be problematic because it's meant to be blue black. So outside of that little blue tint, I would have liked to incorporate more of those blue areas. And if this ink was waterproof, you could do that and do some really fun ink washes. Honestly, I think the fact that it's not waterproof really does hurt this as it's a beautiful shade of blue that you can do some really cool stuff with. It doesn't quite operate as a watercolor paint or watercolor ink at that. It's just kind of weird how it's not waterproof and I would have preferred it to be so so that we could play off of it more and make the illustration better. And then here at the end, as you can see when I peeled the tape, yeah, it bled under the tape, which wasn't good. Now I did do this illustration about a month ago so you could argue that the tape came off but I've inked illustrations that were sketched several months back with tape and it had no such problem so I think it's just because of the liquid nature of the ink or just how watery it is either way it was just kind of annoying and frustrating and that's really kind of what this experience was where it wasn't quite horrible it was just a little annoying and frustrating and if this ink was waterproof and it worked better with the nib I felt like this illustration just could have been a lot stronger than what it actually was but either way I am very happy with what we got so let's go ahead and take a look at our finished product And we're done. And guys, I love how this piece came out. Easily in my top 20 favorite pieces of the year. It looks awesome. And while I don't think it's top 10 material, I think it's really close. And if you guys like it, it is available on my RCH account for a $1 digital download. It's the first link in the description down below, and it really does help the channel out. Plus, you get an awesome desktop background, or in this case, phone background. Now, putting the piece to the side, let's talk about the ink itself. And I have to say that I'm actually really disappointed, as I love Windsor Newton. And honestly, everything that I've tried from them has been of great quality, except for this and their white ink. Their brushes are 
are great and the rest of the drawing inks are fun and amazing to use. Now I do understand that this is a calligraphy ink and I assumed, and of course it said on the packaging, that it was really meant for fountain pens and dip pens. So it's lacking with a brush is understandable, but for me, you're going to get a lot more out of an ink if you're able to use it with a brush as it makes it more versatile and easier to do illustrations and just adds a whole new level of what you can do. The fact that this ink is really bad with a brush does hurt in my opinion. And even though it does advertise it's good with a dip pen, yeah, not really. While it was very smooth and nice in our test, when it came down to actually following a line and a sketch, it was difficult and I found that my lines were just a little choppy. They weren't as smooth as they could have been. And that's not an experience on my end. That is just the fact that the ink was not being as nice as it should have been, which is a big problem compared to, of course, it's a calligraphy ink and you know it's meant to do that, but to the drawing ink, which did everything that this ink should do and more. Now, the fact that this isn't waterproof is actually a big problem. And you wouldn't think about that for a calligraphy ink, but there are calligraphy artists who do incorporate ink washes. And on top of that, how are you able to take advantage of the colors? For example, you're supposed to layer a color ink so you can get multiple tones. And to do that, you would also need an ink wash. The fact that this thing isn't waterproof and it washes away detail is a bit of a problem. And it really should advertise that this is not waterproof on the packaging somewhere. And I checked it. It does not. So that's not good. However, you do get a decent amount of ink for the price. I mean, so $7.99 for 30 milliliters of ink is not bad compared to the drawing ink. But I do think that this drawing ink is just a far superior quality than this one. And I just can't recommend the calligraphy ink. For me, this honestly is going to get a three out of my scale of one to 10. The only reason I'm giving it a three is because I actually really love this blue tone in here. If you can use it in the background where you're not going to do an ink wash, I think that's really useful and it's a very nice, but I'm only going to recommend it just for the blue black. If it's any other color, I'm not going to recommend it because the Winsor Nugent drawing ink is able to actually get a wide range of colors. They work really well with the waterproof and they even have non-waterproof versions of their black ink that you can use. And that's my review of the Winsor Nugent calligraphy ink. I love to hear your guys' opinions in the comment section down below. Do you think that it's unfair of me to actually test this calligraphy ink in terms of an illustration? Should I have just done calligraphy? I love to hear your opinions on that. Have you used the ink in the past? What do you think of the Winsor Newton normal ink? I have reviewed it, so I'm really curious about your opinions on that. And also, what do you think of the illustration? Lust is actually a really fun character to draw because, well, just look at her. I know that this probably isn't the best pose for her debut. We will be illustrating her more along with Ras other siblings, so do stay tuned for that. And of course, you can check out my R State channel for more posters, and eventually we'll be getting the comic all set, got the first issue written, so I can't wait to be putting that out. But with all that said, I'm Jay Rod of Battle Productions. I draw the power in my own soul, and thank you all for watching.